Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I wanted to answer a question. Is abstract art dead or dying? This comes from reading an article about the Met Brewer and how it's actually closing its doors in July. And this was actually three years ahead of schedule. I'm, I really want to talk about this article because it's very interesting. Essentially, a lot of people have been asking this for a long time. In fact, people thought that art was dead when the camera was invented and photographs were becoming a thing. But nowadays, it's, it's even more so. It feels like that physical art is dying because we have digital art. Why do we need you know, a painting when someone can just print off a picture and put it in a frame or, you know, on canvas or something like that. So why do you even need art? You know, especially abstract. I think that the answer is twofold. Yes, it is dying in one sense, but it's not dead in another. And I wanna say, I'll kind of explain what I mean by that. Now, let me go back to the article real quick because I, I found it really interesting. So the Met Brewer is actually closing in July of 2020. And ironically enough, their final show, their final major show is a Gerard Richter exhibit. You know, your boy, Gerard Richter, one of my favorites, uh, they're actually closing on his exhibit. And the exhibit is called Painting After All. And I find it kind of melancholic because it will probably also be his last exhibit, uh, at least major exhibit, um, in his lifetime. I mean, the guy is 88, I believe, and he's actually one of probably the celebrated, the most celebrated living uh, abstract artist today. I mean, the guy has been painting for like, I think it's 50 years he's been painting. Uh, maybe more. I could be wrong. I don't remember what the actual number was, but he's been painting a long, long time. I find it interesting because one, that the museum is closing three years ahead of schedule. But two, that they would also close on Gerard's work and that it would be probably his final exhibition. Why do I find this interesting and how does it tie into what we're talking about today? Well, let me kind of come back to that. I, I think it's interesting about the museum itself, closing three years early. I, th I find this kind of interesting because this was actually published in March of this year. So it kind of actually, and it happened in March 5th. So it kind of happened before the coronavirus kind of really uh, was rampant and, and kind of took over. I think it was kind of going on, but it wasn't you know, as crazy as it was uh, later in March. But I find it interesting just because what does this signify? What does this indicate that the museum would close three years early? What I think that this indicates is that the place of museums isn't as necessary as it used to be. There's a lot of talk both uh, on both sides, um, if, depending on who you ask, if art is dead or if painting especially is, is dying. Uh, some people will say, yes, painting is dying. It you know, hasn't been around or needed for you know years now. And I think there was a quote, if I can find the quote, I'll, I'll link to it in the description of, of an artist saying, you know what, we, we don't need paintings anymore because we have digital pictures, um, which I, I understand and I think that that is uh, true to some degree. So I think that art in the sense of public art probably is dying. I think that people are just not going to museums and stuff anymore because of the internet, because of electronics. Do I think that it's dead or is it dying? It could be dying, but I don't think it's dead because I think that in that span where it's dying uh, in the, the public sense, uh, it is now going to more commercial, a uh, more commercial sense. So it's more available to the average person, the regular buyer. So it's not, it's not dead in the sense that nobody's buying it. It's just kind of the focus has shifted from going to museums to look at art, um, to just buying art individually and having it in your home. That's more accessible. And I, I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment. That's the first part of it. The second part of that is the fact that Gerard Richter is also not going to exhibit anymore. Again, this probably comes down to his age being, you know, in his 80s, the guy is, is old. But if you're doing something you love, I, you know, from what I hear from people, if you, if you do something you love, it's not really work, so you could probably do it for a long time. And you also hear stories of people who, uh, you know, have played piano for years and years and years. Their, their hands have kind of curled over and, you know, they have arthritis and stuff like that in their hands and, and they hurt immensely because of that. But when they go and sit down and play at that piano, they can still play it just as well as they could 20 years before because 
they love it. They and, the, and that love trumps the pain. Just thinking about that and thinking about how Gerard Richter, if you know, according to different sources, say that he's the most celebrated and one of the most best selling artists. I mean, he sells works for millions. And just the fact that he's kind of not going to be exhibiting anymore, I think that also kind of signifies that this idea of, of the super expensive exhibits for these museums and these artists getting paid overwhelming sums and uh, just the whole environment of museums, I think it does indicate at some level that, uh, that they are dying that museums are dying. I mean, you can read different articles about admission sales being down, not even just in this time right now, like last year, like before this, sales are down, you know, t admission sales are down. And I think that that's just because of the internet. And so I think that the internet, just like many brick and mortar businesses, because galleries and museums are are really, they, they're just like any other business. If you really stop and think about it, a gallery is really there to show you art and sell it to you, right? That's that's the whole business model. A museum's a little different. They're not trying to sell you on the art. They're just trying to show you a bunch of cool different art from different artists. And then they use that money to pay the artists to commission those artists to make art for the museums. So, you know, it you know, our you know, galleries and museums, their business model is a little different. Um, but ultimately they are businesses, you know, and businesses need people to thrive. And the internet has changed that. The internet has changed that for literally every type of business, every industry. It has made it more readily available for, uh, you know, for anybody to get to anything. And there's two parts of this that I want to highlight. First is the education or information or entertainment aspect of it. So we have more information or more things to kind of fill our time, but also the commerce part of it. Okay. So now that the internet is prevalent, it's literally in the fabric of our lives unless you're maybe Amish or something. But uh, you know, it, it's in everything that we do and it's only going to become more and more and more integrated into our lives. And that being the case, uh, that has changed the landscape of both entertainment and commerce. So thinking about it in that term, uh, galleries and museums, and, and I heard that you know they have to sell quite a bit of art to keep galleries open. Now I live in Phoenix or well, close to Phoenix. And if you go to Flagstaff or Prescott, which is kind of up north of here, um, or Sedona, there's a lot of these little galleries, right? And, and they occupy these little tiny um, storefronts, right? And I've heard that it's really hard to keep those open because people just, you know, it's cool to go into a gallery, but I, I have to imagine that most of the people that go into these little galleries are not buying. So thinking about that, and and how much they would have to sell to keep their rent and pay their employees how much art they would have to sell they're taking a risk in you know investing in those artists and trying to sell that artwork and they have to sell that artwork more expensive than the artists can just sell it by themselves now the galleries and the museums again different business models but let's talk about both in those terms so first off uh, we'll talk about the entertainment section of this. So museums would probably fall more into the realm of entertainment because you go to a museum to be enthralled by the art there, right? You go to a museum to, uh, you know, to look at grandiose pictures, you know, paintings and sculptures and, you know, whatever, these, these exhibits that these artists make. And these things are pretty cool. They're pretty fascinating. And to see works that you've maybe only seen on a picture up close, that can be pretty breathtaking. Even if you've bashed an artist's work just by the pictures, if you see it up close, you could get a different feeling because it's right there. It's right there. You get to see that in real life. It's a physical thing right in front of you. But the thing is, is that because of the internet, you can now see almost everything you ever wanted to. You see before, you know, 30 years ago, before the internet was really a thing, you couldn't do that. You, if you heard about a work, say, you know, I was interested in seeing uh, a Gerard Richter painting in person. I had to go to one of those museums to see that painting in real life. I had to go there to see it. And maybe, maybe I went and saw it and it wasn't that great for me, right? It really wasn't that exciting. So a picture of it would have been just fine, but you see it in a book, it's a little different to see it up like, that's fine, right? But if you wanted to see any artwork you'd ever heard of, you had to go to the museums 
that had that. And I think at the time that was a great learning tool. It's great for kids. It's great for, you know, adults, you know, a family thing to go with you. But that, you, that was the only way that you could see that work. Nowadays, that's not the case. Nowadays, there's pictures upon pictures. Um, people post pictures all the time. Uh, you can literally look up any artwork you want. And a lot of the museums now even have virtual tours that you can take. So you can literally go to the website and you can go and you can walk around the museum without even leaving your house. And this is great, you know, it's a, again, a great learning tool for kids to see that kind of artwork and see the setups and stuff, but you don't have to physically be there. And for people who are, you know, trying to explore art on a budget, that's perfect for them. So if they really didn't, you know, want to go there for the experience, which I would totally understand because I think it's, it's cool to go to museums and galleries. But if you were really only just going to, to look at some of the stuff, but you didn't care about that. Well, why would you spend any money going there when you can go on a virtual tour? Now, I'm not saying that's every person. Obviously, some people want to go and experience that. In fact, I want to go to Pollock's house because you know, it was, you know, Pollock is one of the reasons I started painting in the first place. Uh, I want to go to New York and see his house, right? I've seen pictures of it, but I still want to go there. But there's other museums and stuff that has art that I'm interested in that I just have no interest in going to, right? So hopefully that kind of makes sense that nowadays there's an inundation of of pictures and video and, and virtual tours and, and all these other things that you can look at that if you didn't want to spend the money, you don't have to. And that wasn't the same, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Now, let's talk about the commerce side of this. So that the museums, I would say, fall more under the entertainment. And because of the internet, we literally can go on YouTube. We can go look up pictures. We can go on virtual tours. We just don't need to go there anymore to experience that art. So now we kind of, again, go to the commerce side, which galleries would fit more under because a, a gallery's whole job is to exhibit art to sell. Right? A museum is just kind of showcasing that art. Sometimes they might sell it if somebody really has a lot of money, but usually it's just to exhibit the art to really you know, show you a vast array of art, which is great. The galleries usually are a little different. They might show a kind of a vast array of art, but still in a specific niche or only by a select few artists because they want artists that are going to sell. Again, a gallery's whole job is to sell art on behalf of of the artist taking that aspect into you know into account with the internet again we kind of come to the same conclusion that the internet has changed the landscape of commerce this is why brick and mortar businesses are dying because you can buy anything you want online if you want just a general item you can go to amazon or you can you know you can even buy from a local store online and then have it shipped to you or that store so you don't even have to go shopping heck now you can just buy it online, ship it to the store, then go pay somebody else to go pick it up from the store for you. You don't even have to leave your house to go buy groceries or, or anything, right? So because of that, now you can buy artwork directly from the artist on some kind of storefront, right? From their from their personal website or from Etsy or, or eBay or, or Saatchi Art, whatever it is, right? You can buy directly from the artist. This is killing galleries. Galleries, you know, obviously a, whole, a gallery's whole point is to sell the art for the artist. And, uh, you know, since the artist can sell directly to customers, they can sell at lower cost because they don't have to like double the price or at least inflate it to cover the cost that they have to pay to the gallery. Uh, they can set different prices. They can set custom prices. So say if you bought from me on Satyar, it has to be a certain price to cover my costs. Well, if you buy from my website, it's going to be cheaper because not only can I lower the cost because I don't have to pay Satyar, but also I can give you a discount on top of that, a custom discount that I choose that you could not get anywhere else. So not only are you paying less, but you can get custom things and you can talk directly to the artist. The internet has allowed us to be able to communicate directly with artists to be able to sell items like that. What does that mean? Well, same thing. Now that you can buy art directly from uh, the artist, do you really need galleries? Because there's online galleries. Listen, I sell on Saatchi Art, okay? Saatchi Art doesn't charge me anything to list. It only takes a cut of the sale. It's roughly a third. 
which is still a decent amount. However, if I went through a regular gallery, it might be 40, 50, 60%, depending on the gallery. So I'm still making more money and I can set the price myself through Saatchi Art. So not only am I setting the price, but I'm paying less to Saatchi Art, which is an online gallery, than I would through a brick and mortar. So my point out of all of this is to kind of come back full circle to uh, the question that I initially, you know, set out to answer. Is art dying? Is, and, and I think a big part of what people are asking is, is abstract art dying? But I really think it's kind of an overall arching thing. So my ultimate answer is no, it's not dying in the sense of it's going away per se. It's dying in the sense that no longer is it in the power or the hands of large galleries or museums, but in the hands of regular people. Now you don't have to go to a gallery to buy cool artwork. You can actually just go directly to the artist and get it from them. Or if you want to look at cool artwork, if you didn't, if you weren't going to pay that cost anyway to go to a gala, you know, a museum, and you were only going to do it because that was your only option, well, now you can just go online and look at that stuff. And and there's so many great artists nowadays that, uh, you know, the landscape has just really changed on variety. Now, the last point I kind of want to touch on is that no artwork has not died. It's just changed and evolved, just like everything else with the internet, like we've talked about. It has also changed the types of artwork. So painting is kind of a thing. Obviously, I love painting, but painting, you know, before just meant, you know, you could get a painting and that's really kind of the only artwork that was there. Yeah, I had paintings and then sculptures and little handmade things, things like that, right? Those were kind of the main things. But see, with the internet and, and digital art, you can make a painting on your computer and it just stores as a file and you can mass produce that file image, right? You can take that photo, you can put that picture on, you know, print on demand uh, products and you could sell all of those products with only one thing of effort. And I think a lot of people are kind of moving that way because let's face it, I mean, the internet again has changed so much. So I think it's kind of evolved from, uh, more physical products to digital products. Now, just from my own observation, it seems like uh, the lower cost stuff, so people who are going for lower cost items, they tend to go for those those images that are digitally made. And then people who want to spend a little more, you know, hundreds on an item, then they'll get the, you know, unique items. But again, they don't have to go through galleries to do that. So ultimately, I don't think that art, art is dead. I don't think that painting is dead. I think that a lot of it has just shifted and it probably isn't as as prevalent as it used to be. You know, painting was just kind of the accepted thing back then, you know, art uh, like that. So sculptures, paintings, things like that, that was accepted. But now that we have print on demand, I mean, you could just go upload an image somewhere and then have it printed on a canvas for you. So you don't have to go through an artist to make you something cool. You could just find a cool picture upload it and then there you go, you have your artwork. So I think that uh, maybe some of the older traditional methods probably aren't as popular as they used to be, yes. I think that some of those aspects have died and I think that some of the old attachments, the old world attachments of galleries and museums, a lot of that has died with it. Has artwork in and in it of itself died? No, it's just shifted more to digital things and selling direct to consumer and being able to to view a vast i mean you can go on instagram and see a thousand different images on one page so you don't really need to go to a gallery anymore because everything has changed so much so that's it for the video uh, again i was kind of inspired by that because i thought that was very interesting that not only is met brewer closing early but their last exhibit was gerard richter and, and I just love Gerard Richter, so I think that that's awesome that they would close on his exhi exhibition. And not only that, but it would possibly be his last exhibition. It just feels almost like a, just a swan song, right? It's, it's just kind of a, a close, like almost a really sad close to see that kind of stuff dying. But I think it's an indication of, of kind of where uh, our work is moving to. So anyways, that's it. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Hope you've 
you know, thought it was interesting or something, you know, leave a comment in the comment section below uh, what your thoughts are. Do you think that artwork is dead? Do you think it's dying? Um, or do you just think that it's shifted? Maybe some of it's died, other parts haven't. I really want to see what you guys think in the comment section below. So please let me know. Uh, but that's it. If you liked it, let me know. If you didn't, that's cool. Let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. God bless. Bye guys.